This is quite possibly the number one meal of my entire life. Buenos my adventures. adventures. We're Madison and Ivan, and if you've seen pretty much any of our videos, you know we're pretty major foodies. This but way. typically, we're kind of hitting up the hole in the walls, the street food. Really, like, when it comes to food, we do value value a little bit. You know, we, we definitely value great food, and we've had some amazing meals so far in Mexico City, but today we are changing it up, which is going to be insane. We are headed to a place. I'm like laughing, this is so crazy to me. Ranked the ninth best restaurant in the entire world and the number one best restaurant in North America. <laughs> it's like meeting wow. a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> You're catching us in, in motion right now is because we are running late. It is a Tuesday mid-afternoon and this was the only reservation they had for months. Yeah. Okay, so we are lucky to even get this reservation. So we gotta hustle over there, speed yeah. walk, and, and make sure, you know, we're, yeah. we're showing them yeah. the respect. Yeah. So we're gonna go. <laughs> Bye. Welcome to Don't freak out too much. Those prices are in pesos, but we have a seven course meal ahead of us. And in Mexico, of course, we have to start with some margaritas. I got a ginger margarita with volcanic salt on the rim. It's very sweet and refreshing. And I even got a creamy tamarind margarita with worm salt. Packs a punch. It's like burpee. It feels like a thick beverage. A yuku. <laughs> Bad analogy. Their take on a, on a sope. So we have the, the base and then a pico de gallo on the middle. And then that's an avocado in, cut in that circular shape. It feels very right. Oh, the sope is like hard on the outside and like tender, tender, tender on the inside. A blast of citrus from the pico. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. It's gonna be a good day. This is one of the most famous dishes from Puyol. Ever since I saw this on chef's table, oh man. And I wasn't even expecting to get this today. This is baby corn covered in mayonnaise made from the delicacy Chiquitana ants. It's smoky, but like the corn, great crunch, really good baby corn. But then it like, almost like a burnty flavor. It's so good. It's the corn husks. I think the smoking corn husks just like infuse that smoke into the, the mayo. I'm sure the ants are adding something, but you can't put your, you know, put words to it. It's just like mixed in, it's blended in. There's no like grittiness or anything. Wow, burnt marshmallows. When I make my s'mores, I like to get those things nice and charred and with that good crisp on it, that delicious kind of burnt flavor. That is what this has. This is so good. It has this great creaminess to it. Corn in Mexico is just better. And this is definitely a testament to that. This is delicious corn. But I love that flavor. Because the best, to me, that's the best part about s'mores. And the fact that this captures that in such a beautiful way through ants is incredible. So those two dishes were literally just labeled snacks on the menu. So already this has become an eight course meal and already Puyol is full of delicious surprises. Next we have amberjack ceviche with radish, jicama, ginger, and quinoa. Okay, and then you gotta make a tostada with these chips. This is such a good chip. Fish is so delicate, but that sauce has like a mustard, like a nice, really nice finish to it. The veggies are so fresh. Oh my, the crunch is so satisfying. They've just combined flavors in such a magnificent way. Mm. This is 
mind blowing. Everything we've been so far has been just incredible. Like I see why this is the ninth best restaurant in the world. We're on the second course. Mm. For our next course is a tuna tostada. On the base, you're gonna find homemade kimchi with avocado puree. On top, chives with ginger oil. So in this course, we suggest with your fingers spread on the chives in the tostada. See you on the top. This is my amount of chives. This is the right amount of chives. This reminds me of chia pets. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Tuna is so tender, it's like cream. It's just like a nice, soft, beautiful spread on a, on a crispy tostada. With this like great sauce, and the chives, those mic. Oh my. This beauty is a chile relleno, a stuffed chili stuffed with octopus and topped with some broccolini puree. Zoom looking for the octopus. <laughs> Do you think that, you know, you're eating a pepper super spicy, right? No, the spice is actually coming from the inside, like, saucy uh, calamari, or octopus there. And this, this just calms the spice down so well. I love that. I can't believe that's a vegetable. I just love like how spicy that octopus is. Like, it's a perfect, perfect combo between like that crunchy, squishy, and that, that spice that just like put, gets your tongue on fire, and then you like put it out with some of this heavenly cream. Oh. It's also like so rare to have like flavorful food at fancy places, right? It's, it's always... <laughs> I hate to feel like that's a mean thing to say, but like, sometimes it's like about how like finessed it is and how like beautiful it is. This is about taste. It looks good, but it tastes better. This is a Veracruz on a sea bass y cajime chipachole, seafood stew served with green beans. Yeah, that's good. The sauce is like aerated. Great texture. It reminds me so much of my mom's cooking. White fish, like it's got like individual flakes. The thin's texture is so nice. There's so much flavor in this, in this sauce. It almost reminds me of like a curry. At the same time, it's not. It's very light, very airy. It reminds me of tomato soup, but like, in like you know, it's not your Panera tomato soup. It's like the most amazing, complex, delicious tomato soup you could ever imagine. They source their ingredients from the best places. This is like the best tomato. It was just a tomato in this delicious sauce, but it was just a tomato. But it's like the best tomato I've ever had. Yeah, this is like the drum roll. Mm -hmm. We're about to get the mole, which is, I mean, what literally every single person talks about when they come here. <laughs> you have the mole. Have you ever had mole before? It smells spicy, but not in a like a heat, like chili kind of way. Spicy is in like all sorts of different spices. So complex. We're starting with the new mole, the lighter one in the center. Ooh. There's like three different flavors that that has. Start sweet, goes to rich, and spicy. This tortilla is special because it's made with hoja santa leaves. The outside, the mole madre, 2000, over seven years old. Smoky, smoky, a little gritty, not nearly as spicy as the other one, actually sweet, and then it changes to spicy, and then back to sweet. 
My words can't even keep up with all the flavors that are happening right now. You would think, you would think that the, the older one has like had, had this like extra time to like get so rich, spicy and no. Instead it like mellows, but gets complex. Well, I was like, this one, the middle one is actually the spicier, the richer, the like more hit you in the face kind of flavor. It just seems crazy that what this amazing, expensive, like best restaurant ever is known for is just a plate of sauce. So it's the first time I heard about this restaurant. This has been on my mind. I'm so excited. It's a new mole that they just cooked. Wow. It's spicy, it's smoky, it's a little bit sweet because of the chocolate. It just Wow, that's super tasty. Mm. Now I'm moving to the old mole. Um, it's like a sourdough bread and that they keep reusing the mother, uh, you know, like the main, like a piece of it. And so uh, this has been aged for, the, the mother that they started with has been aged for almost seven and a half years, over seven and a half years, so. Yeah, wow. It is smoky, it is rich. There's a huge difference between the two. The sweetness, the, the bitterness too, but in like a really good way. It is awesome. And burnt leaf on this tortilla too. Super complements it as well. You have to try this. This is fantastic. I'm beaming, which it seems weird to find this much joy in like eating a meal, but like you legitimately are just filled with joy over the deliciousness, over the discovery of these new flavors, over the anticipation of what's coming next, and yeah, just the curiosity of like, what is it gonna be? What is it gonna taste like? Like, it's it's an amazing experience so far. The completely clear place. It's an almond cake with vanilla and rum ice cream. On top, it comes with a gold leaf. Wow. <laughs> Maybe. It's a very milky almond cake. It's almost like if you combined a really, really, really good wedding cake with a tres leches cake. That's good. Yes, that sounds like my That's dream. That's a good combo, right? <laughs> that is straight up my dream cake. The gold leaf, let me tell you, it tastes like nothing. Nothing at all. But it feels bougie. It's not like a wafer wafer, it's like a meringue wafer. Ooh, yeah. It's like a hard meringue. It's really good. This is so tasty. Kind of as perfect as an anniversary dessert yeah. to have something so similar to wedding cake. Butternut squash and elder flowers, elder girls, raspberries, and the sorbet is made with sake and sake. In combination of sweet and alcohol, kind of like cuts the sweetness a little bit. Feels a little bit healthy. We yeah, had just such a fun combination of fruits and vegetables and flowers and just like so many, so many tastes going on. That's good. We have a churro with cabinet sugar and cinnamon. And we have a calvados ice cream with apple puree. Right when you think, okay, I'm on to the last dish. They surprise you with their famous churro. <laughs> really nice about this is that it's thinner, which means the ratio of crust to filling, there's more crust to like volume. So like just extra, extra texture. Mm. Oh man, don't get me wrong. El Moro, it's the best churro in the world. Okay, we've 
and we had the opportunity to have it here in Mexico City. This true is better. <laughs> it's better than the best. Hmm. Sauerkraut is so much crunch. Crunch and then soft. Oh boy. No, but enough of this. You need you actually need to try this before it gets cold. <laughs> wow. I've never had a churro melt in my mouth before. This is the perfect amount of salty and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stop laughing about how good it is. <laughs> it's so good. The chef talks about the nostalgia and how he is making dishes that transport him back to different moments in his childhood and his life. The chef grew up in Mexico City, which obviously has a very different food culture than the United States. Ah. Um, but it's been crazy how many of these dishes this included that like, you know, like churros take me to Disneyland, take me to Disney World, take me to festivals and fairs. And yet like this does that, but then like makes that memory almost like richer. This is one of the greatest things I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> mm. Wow. Y'all, that was insane. That was 100% in the top five. Might be number one meal of my entire life. It was so freaking good. Best restaurant in North America. I believe it. Absolutely. <laughs> that wasn't just food. That was like a, a whole experience. Three hours. Closer to four hours. Just so many courses. It's going to sound like overly philosophical, but like sometimes Food isn't just food, you know, like it, it's a journey. It's it's like relaxation, it's meditation. Like you just come to this beautiful, peaceful restaurant and, and people make you thoughtfully crafted, complicated, but still delicious. Can't forget the delicious part, <laughs> right? It could be beautiful, it can be uh, uh, crafted just right, but if it doesn't taste good, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. I feel like when we said there's a lot going on in that restaurant, it could have been taken in a bad way, but like every time we said it, it meant like we just had to take a moment to take in the beautiful complexity. I, I can't tell you all the 500 ingredients that he put in there. All I can tell you is that that combination worked. We, we went through kind of like a, a, a journey through Mexico as well, right? We got sopes, we got uh, tostadas, and like now mole. we're in mole. Now we're gonna compare. Churros. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I feel like they took elements of what it was quote unquote meant to be, the way mm -hmm. grandma would make it, yeah. right? And then added the modern flair to it, yeah. added the yeah. his spin to it. Challenge you, like in the best way. We ate ants, we had worm salt. Like we had all sorts of random ingredients, this type of corn we've never, I've never heard of the type of fish that we had in the ceviche. I'm gonna have to look it up. Um, but all of it was incredible. Just when we thought we were done, they <laughs> brought us an anniversary pastry. And then at the end, they throw in this complimentary churro. The, the transition, so smooth. Yeah so smooth between like a lot of like citrus in the beginning to awaken like wake you up you you're ready you're like okay mm -hmm. this is happening let's go <laughs> yeah. you get to the main course some nice creamy tomato and then you get to the mole and the mole is the perfect segue right it has some fruit in it it has some chocolate in it and it's just taking you a little bit like you're you're getting ready for dessert oh yeah oh yeah and then and then the ice creams hit and the churro hits and uh, the sorbet hits oh yeah what was your favorite thing that we ate today? That is so hard. <laughs> that is unbelievably we might not hard. Have to. But if I had to, had to choose, overall, has to be a main dish because I love my savory foods. Has to be the, uh, the, the stuffed chili pepper with octopus in it. That was just like, that was like, oh, this is fancy food. This is very skilled food, but this is tasty food, yeah. right? When you put all three of those together, that spice yeah. hits you, and then that that broccolini, uh, uh, what was it? The Bro mousse, yeah, the broccoli, some sort of cream. Cream? I don't know what I they just, called it. I can't believe I'm complimenting broccolini. <laughs> I can't believe I'm excited about broccolini. Yeah. yeah. 
but I'm gonna have to go home and figure uh, out how to make that because that like, so good. It, it yeah, just uh, it clears your palate. It's like creamy, but it's a vegetable. It's a, I, I don't know. It was amazing. I think my favorite would have to be the mole though. And I think it's because I do have the sweet tooth and this was just like the perfect kind of starts to activate your sweet tooth. It fulfills that little bit of a craving, but oh my gosh, the flavor, the spices, the complexity. Oh, yeah. that was fantastic. I, I totally have to agree that that was the most interesting thing I had today. You know, like that was, I've never, I've just never had anything like that. Yeah. I, just, I don't yeah. even know what that taste was until today. Yeah, <laughs> that was outstanding. And also shout out to the, the person, the angel, that, that canceled their Tuesday yes. afternoon reservation at the last yes. minute that allowed us to just <laughs> sneak in there. Yes, whoever you are, you're crazy to cancel on Puyo. This was fantastic and you missed out, but also we love you so much and thank you. And, and we love all of you as well. <laughs> yes, so please. thank you so much for joining us for this yes. mad adventure. And please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Nap time. <laughs> Oh, buenas tardes.